Hi, welcome back to Rust 101. This is video 50. Can you believe it? And we are doing some exercises for the last module, which is on foreign function interfaces. I actually think these exercises are more useful than the, uh, the slides. They get really practical about how you actually do this. So first example, um, doing, using some C code in Rust. So we have some C code in this situation, uh, which is this really useful bit of C code, which calculates a CRC checksum, which we don't have to care about. So it has a .c file and a .h file. We're only going to look at the .h file. Um, so let's have a look at the readme. So in order for this to work, we need a C compiler because we've got some C code here. So like, um, maybe someone else could have compiled it, um, in some other scenario, but for us, um, on the, in this example, we've actually we've just got some raw C source code, so we're going to need a C compiler as well as a Rust compiler if we're going to make use of it. Imagine this um, C function was incredibly useful, um, and not the type of thing you could just rewrite in Rust in half an hour. Then this is how we would use it. So the first thing they tell us to do is to add a build dependency to our create our cargo dot uh, like this. So this, um, I assume, whoops, I assume what this does is gives us a C compiler. Often C compilers are called CC. So it gives us the ability to compile stuff. I'm guessing. I don't know. Um, so we've done that. And now let's do the next thing it says, which is to create a build.rs file. So we haven't talked about these, I don't think, but um, oh, I just, I, I, I practiced this before, so I've actually already done what they said. Um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, build.rs files are things that run during your build, uh, like Rust code that runs during your build. So it has this main method and that gets run wh when you compile. So what it's saying is use the CC um, create, um, print out some stuff that the cargo compiler listens to, to say this should get rerun if, if this file changed. And we're saying it for either of these two files. And then this is the thing that actually says compile this crc32.c file into a .a file, which is, um, like object code that can then get linked into our Rust executable. So when we run, um, it compiles the code, but we um, haven't changed anything. So let's just change something here. Uh, what should we change? I don't want to break anything too badly, do we? Uh, and hello. Let's make ourselves an empty function, huh? That should, shouldn't break anything too badly. Now when we run, we'll notice the compile happens. Yes, yeah, so um, that build.rs, even though we haven't, oh, I should have just said, oh, we should have, right, let's just delete this. And let's just do a cargo build, just to demonstrate that the C compile happens even when we don't run. Huh, that didn't happen. <laughs> kind of spoiling my point. Um, if we put it back again. Okay, this time it ran. I, that's, I'm surprised it didn't, uh, maybe it had somehow cached the previous build. But yeah, okay, so, um, uh, when, the point is, when we run a cargo build, it runs the, the code in build.rs. So it compiles and runs the code in build.rs for us and compiles this stuff. So let's get rid of this. There's no use to us. So, there we go. So, um, how that works is that we have this build.rs file. These are information, as I said, to the compiler. And then this uses this CC module to compile the C code in a way that we don't have to care about, right? This is just a, a detail for the purposes of this. We're really talking about the foreign function interface here. So what we did was we put a build dependency into uh, cargo.toml saying, I want this CC thing to be available. Yeah, we only need it for this build.rs. This build.rs says, just says, compile this C code so it's available for me to use in my Rust. So now we've got that kind of um, prerequisite out of the way. Now let's do the actual stuff, which is the FFI stuff. So in our main.rs file, we're going to make ourselves uh, an extern declaration. C 
So here's what it's going to look like. Now I'll talk about that hint in a second. But yeah, so let's look at our header file. This is C code. So these types are C types. Um, and we need to make, so let's just put this here as a comment. This is what the C code looks like. We need to make a declaration that our Rust code can understand that tells us exactly what types the C function takes and returns. So it returns a unt32t. And yeah, so I had a quick look at this um, hint that they gave us. And the documentation said, don't use this. Instead, use this. Uh, yeah, so um, basically, these are some types that we can use to um, to express what's meant by um, those C types. So the C type that it returns is a unt32t. So this is basically a 32-bit unsigned integer. Now, I don't see anything exactly equivalent to that. So I think instead of using this, I should probably just use a u32. But I also know that a uint is going to be at least long enough for a, a u32, I think. So maybe we should just to demonstrate, we should use a c uint. There are some other types here which we can use in experimental mode, which would be useful. So I think, yeah, size t would be useful for here, but it's experimental and we're not using a nightly compiler. But for this uint32t, I'm just going to use a c uint and hope that it's right. Um, so that would be core FFI and then C uint. Now, I actually think the better type here would be U32 because I happen to know it's exactly equivalent to this. They're both unsigned uh, integers that are definitely 32 bit. So maybe that would be better. Um, let's get rid of our hint. And um, it takes two, arg two arguments. It takes data and data length. And we need to just translate this C. So this would be what what, uh, what um, cargo bind gen would do for us. Translate these C types into equivalent Rust types. So this is a uint 8t, so it's an unsigned 8-bit value. So that's going to be core FFI C FFI um, C uchar. I don't know why there isn't a uint 8t in, in our FFI module. I guess these types are a bit more modern and they directly, so this would directly re correspond to u8. So actually maybe it would be better to just use u8 instead of using this FFI module. I want to show you the FFI module exists though. So that's why I'm doing that. And then, uh, size t, I happen to know is approximately a U size. So I'm just going to put in U size because I couldn't find, like the only thing in the FFI module that could use size T was experimental. So yeah, so normally I think this translation process process would be simpler because instead of returning a uint 8T, it would return, say, a, um, uh, oh, what did I say? A U char. Now, I've done it wrong already because this doesn't return a uint 8T. It returns a pointer to an array of unit 8t. So actually, we need this to look like this. Uh, star const for a const pointer. I think just that. Like it's a pointer to a, a unit 8t. Um, and they, like in C, one way of writing that is this bracket bracket, which kind of indicates it is actually an array of them. Um, but underneath, it's actually just a pointer to the first one. So that's what we've what we've done. So I don't know whether this translation is right, and perhaps in the comments you might tell me if it is. But in principle, you're going to need to do some kind of translation like this. Um, so we've done that. So we've, now we've defined something which basically tells us this C function exists and takes these arguments. And if we get those arguments wrong, by the way, all kinds of weird and wonderful things might go wrong. Um, yeah. But the next thing to do is make a nice Rust function which calls that nasty function that takes all those weird pointers and stuff um, and takes in some nicer types. So how would we do this in Rust? So basically, what does this function do? It takes in some data, which is a list of U8s. So we have a way of saying that, right? That's um, a slice of U8s. And it returns a an unsigned 32-bit integer. So we can do U32. That's all it is. 
Um, so that's the signature of this function, but now we need to do the implementation. The implementation is that we're going to call this underlying clever Z code, and we're going to pass in a pointer to the beginning of data and the length of data, and we're going to return whatever CRC32 returns. So it returns a, a C uint. We're saying we want to return a U32. And I think those will just naturally convert between each other, so I think that's okay. But what it's complaining about is that this is unsafe. And the reason it's unsafe is just that um, anything in it, any kind of calling of any kind of C function or external function is unsafe because Rust just doesn't know what um, it does. So we should maybe add some kind of safety comment here, like... Um, um, uh, yeah, basically, we know we know this pointer is valid. It's valid because it points points at a slice, and we know its length is correct. We trust, I guess I could say, CRC thirty two not to modify anything which it could do because it could do some kind of cast to a, a mutable pointer and modify stuff underneath um, but we trust that it won't and I don't know what else to say about safety basically this this function doesn't look very scary it just takes in some like immutable data that it just looks at and then returns a number it's calculated from it so it looks okay all right so what's next in the readme now the next thing to do is actually call this code like so. So basically we're printing out the result of calling this for a particular um, string of bytes. Is that what that is? Um, yeah, I guess that's how you say um, I want a slice of U8s that go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Oh yeah, so how, what is this? This is a yeah, this is a, a string slice that's got the B before it to say yeah, instead of being um, a strut or something like that, it's a binary string. What is the type of this? Let's just, just for our Satisfaction. Let's put this in a variable and check its type. Yeah. So it's it's a yeah. So this b this b and then quote stuff is basically saying, um, give me an array of bytes. Yeah, b for bytes. Yeah, that must be what it is. So array of bytes, which I then slice. Oh no, sorry, a slice of bytes, which I can then pass into CRC32, uh, which does the pointer stuff so that we can call it the C. The C does its work, returns us this number, which we seamlessly translate and get back a number, which we print out. So let's run it. Uh, and it prints out 9A0DAAF, which hopefully is the CRC um, of the of that, those numbers one two three four five six seven eight that we passed in, according to the readme, it is. So we've done it. So that is how you call. How is it? That is how you compile and call a C function from within your Rust code. Hope you enjoyed. See you next time.